If you love Precision Rifle and want to be challenged in a major way, you need to try the Precision Rifle series. Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com inviting you to come along with me as I experience a PRS match for the very first time and reflect on it afterwards with my mentor, Jim Finlay. So that was quite an experience. I'm here with Jim Finlay, longtime friend and kind of shooting partner in crime. Jim, you, you're the one that got me into this whole PRS thing. Yes, absolutely. I think you are going to be going back. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. And what an experience it was. I'll have to say, you know, compared to shooting proned out on a mat, I'm, I'm totally comfortable with that, chronoing the loads, getting it on the target under controlled conditions, but PRS matches are anything but controlled conditions. Let's talk real quick about PRS, the Precision Rifle Series. What is it all about? Uh, they uh, started a series, probably, I think it's probably in 2012, somewhere in that time frame. It's a uh, national event that uh, they have matches throughout the country. And we're very fortunate here in the Pacific Northwest and uh, Washington State in particular, where we have several matches that are points matches. And these points apply to your overall score for the year and uh, that are tallied up. And, and then you, are, you get high enough point value, you get to go to the, uh, the national match at the end of the year. Um, and it's in a very, very short period of time it, it uh, took off like wildfire. Mm -hmm. I think what's neat about it is, you know, a lot of guys like precision rifle. They like the idea of shooting, getting on target at ranges, dealing with factors like wind. And then PRS actually incorporates the shooting off of different types of barricades from different positions at stationary and moving targets at different ranges. It's really quite an interesting game. Yes, there's a lot of skill set involved as opposed to just shooting prone off of a mat at a, at a stationary target um, in given conditions, known distance and so forth. Um, they've mixed it up quite a bit over the years. Uh, they have, uh, because there's so many different venues throughout the nation, uh, they have a particular skill set that each match has to incorporate. Mm -hmm. um, and that, like in, well, we, we shot on that one barricade where we shot uh, two, 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 and two at a specific target and the distance is a known distance. Um, and so every match that's at a points match has to have that particular stage in it to kind of even the thing up because there's so many variations that you can do, uh, especially different terrain. Some, some are shooting in a controlled environment of a rifle, ma a rifle range and mm -hmm. some are out literally like we are now out in, out in the hills. Yeah. Um, a lot of fun, a lot of, uh, a lot of mental challenge on there. One of the things that the uh, PRS type stuff has that, that uh, some of the other matches may not have would be uh, the time constraints. Mm -hmm. um, in the match that we shot a short while ago was a uh, 90 second uh, time frame for each mm -hmm. stage that we shot. And you think uh, 90 seconds, quite a bit of time, and, and it goes by incredibly fast. Um, and you're shooting, let's say, 10 shots. Mm -hmm. in that 90 seconds well you not only do you have to have all your gear together and understand what you're doing and and the distances uh typically all these matches are known distance as opposed to unknown distance um so and that's where where the armband where you can put your data on the band so you can just glance at that with these distances that you have to yep. adjust for and so forth um so yeah 90 seconds you, you time out quite often yeah <laughs> Yeah, so let's let's walk through the whole experience kind of from start to finish, you know. Uh, initially, we were going to both shoot gas guns. I, I recall that was what the conversation was. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and then I, and I carefully <laughs> threw you under the bus on that. <laughs> right. No, but I thought, hey, it's, it's a gas gun, and, and we'll, we'll go into more depth on all of the gear, including the rifles in the next video. But I chose to shoot the AR-15. This is the AR-MPR rifle that I actually built the, the DVD around with a different upper from from nozzler to try out 22 nozzler because you know one of the things that we had as a constraint was the distances that we were working with up to 700 yards and 223 you know is getting kind of into some of the questionable territory ballistically and you know 22 nozzler is that extra bit of edge that keeps us above the transonic zone and able to stabilize bullets still, you know, that are going to work at those distances. So I was really happy actually to do the match with a gas gun to start with. I felt like, 
you know, that helped to remove some of the distractions around working the bolt. I'm still really working on my fundamental skills around not flinching and staying on target and all of that. So that, that, was, that was fun. I think what was helpful for me was, was us going Time through and practicing now. some of the stages on the stopwatch. You know, like you said, that 90 seconds, it goes really, really quickly because you've got to be mentally focused. You've got to get your rifle and any of your bags or get up to the barricade, get positioned and all that, and then start taking shots. And then of course, you've got to acquire the targets. And sometimes the targets are in different directions at different ranges and all of that. So, you know, I learned very quickly going from the typical prone out on a mat, get on target, using the shooter app, using the ballistics. That was all good fundamentals, right? That's super important to have. But working with uh, your peers watching you and under, under the stopwatch definitely takes things kind of to the next level. But I actually enjoyed that, mm -hmm. you know, the, the intense focus, the, you know, being graded on my performance and, and all that. I thought that was, was pretty cool. Sure. And, and that's the other thing, you know, when we practiced, which we, we tried to do a little bit of with, uh, uh, some some of the same stuff that we'd be shooting in the match, and you you kind of lax it easy through there, and you and you and you don't tend to burn up as much time it seems. But when you have, uh, it, it, we had 12 people in our squad, so you have 11 other people watching you, and that adds to the adrenaline rush. And mm -hmm. and uh, for some reason your mind's kind of like, okay, I don't want to look like a total fool here. I'm going <laughs> to see if I can't make this make the rifle r run correctly, yep. get shots on target, that kind of thing. Prime example, I've been doing this since 2000. It's got a lot of years experience, right? Yeah. So the second to last stage I went up to, uh, I had forgot to uh, top off my magazine. Right. So I ran out of shelves. <laughs> and that was what I was doing really fantastic. I mean, I was just banging, the, hitting the steel, and uh, um, no misses hardly at all. I don't yeah. think even had one miss. And I look, and the uh, gun's empty. So yeah. fortunately, I had two more on the side, but, you know, it wasn't enough. Yeah. So same thing. You've got to pay attention the entire time, not just when you're uh, actually up there doing the shooting. Yeah. You know, behind the scenes, you need to make sure your mags are topped off. Uh, help with running the stage in um, some state like like this particular match it's self so you've got to you've got to help out you can't just sit back and watch you got to help run the Impact. stopwatch run the optics um, yeah I actually so. helped out calling some of the shots and that was a lot of fun yes yeah, yeah. to stay engaged with what the group is doing and to be a part of of, of the process is really cool exactly uh, I want to speak to your looking like a fool comment because <laughs> <laughs> I had I had some challenges uh, being my first match, I mean, I went up to the barricade and my bipod fell off. So yeah, kind of flew off, all, all you key mod haters, <laughs> you know, please comment on that because <laughs> I was I was not having much love for key mod at that particular moment. But uh, but overall, what I really enjoyed was the camaraderie and the support that the community gave me. Like you, you helped um, set the context that I was a new shooter. And Jesse Riddell from Arbro's Rifles, he was the guy putting, you know, the match on and all that. It was helpful to talk over what was going to go on and, and to practice it and all that. But the, specifically within the squad, the guys went out of their way to help me, you know, with lending me their gear and giving me pointers. And it really helped. And I actually tried out some of those pointers on the spot, <laughs> which right. it's kind of amusing to not have tried all of the stages before competing. Mm -hmm. Ideally, you want to, to do that. And, and one of the guys that I shot with, Sheldon Nallis, he was, he was uh, talking about how he was in his office shooting off of like scale models of the, well, they were one-to-one -one scale, but you know, models of, of I think it was the T-Post oh, right, challenge right, uh -huh. and dry firing off of it again and again and again. And you know, it kind of goes to you know, practice makes perfect, especially with this. And, and it's going to take, uh, you know, if I, if I continue to do this, which I want to do, it's going to take years to get further along. But, but my goal is, is the experience, right? Sure, and, sure. and to be a part of the community and all that. I don't have any delusions of grandeur around being at the top, you know, of, yeah. of the heat because that's not my career. Um, but to, to be able to rub shoulders with those guys mm -hmm. and, and to, to learn things from them, amazing experience and they've been following up with me hey when are you going to shoot in your next match all that so um, one thing about this experience specifically that was a little bit rattling for me was I had some functioning issues with the rifle because of my load I was running a faster powder in the suggested 22 nozzler lineup of you know of load data and 
I had uh, some failure to feeds and I thought it was dirt, something like that, but it turned out to be pressure related, mm -hmm. excessive pressure. Um, so one thing I learned there is, you know, again, the practice makes perfect kind of a thing. More prep and, and treating things like a detective as well, you know. Yeah. Looking for the case head swipe, looking for those flattened primers. We were shooting in 90, 96 to 100 degree heat that day. The ammo and the rifle had been out in the heat all day. Uh, later I switched to H380 powder, which is a slower powder, and I was actually increasing my velocity and had zero functioning issues. Mm -hmm. So if I could go around, go back and do it again, I would actually, you know, do a little bit more low development, and then I think I would have had a better experience. But again, sure. my goal was not not to be the last person. Right. <laughs> I think I was succeeded at eight or tenth from last or whatever, <laughs> and to experience the event. So sure, sure. yeah, and and that's another thing. Um, a lot of different uh, ideas about uh, practice and so forth, and mm -hmm. some people uh, spend a ton of time dry firing, which is a good thing to a point. But at some point, you need to be out there. You need to. Uh, get some rounds down range. Prime example being uh, the rifle functioned just fine when we were shooting uh, during practice, mm -hmm. but it was a little cooler too. Yep. And, the, and the ammunition and the rifle weren't out in the sun as you know for the whole day. Yep. And as the day got on on the match day, as, it, as we were out there for in the fourth or fifth hour, malfunction started showing up. This is stuff that, that, that um, short of being out in the field and actually shooting your firearms, you're not going to find this yeah. stuff out. Yep. Um, so let's talk about that. Let's talk. I, I would encourage if if you are, are at all interested in precision rifle, I would suggest that you sign up for a match and do it. You don't have much to lose, and you have a whole lot to gain. Let's talk about that first match. So from my perspective, find a mentor, which I did, and that was you, and that was a a lot of fun, and b really helpful to get into the game and to know what to expect. Even It's kind of like going to camp. You're not going to know what to expect until you're there, right? Sure. Um, and then when you go back to camp, oh, I can't wait to do canoeing again, right? Mm -hmm. For me with PRS, it's now I have a complete, completely better picture. But had I come in completely unaware of what was going to go on and without your help, it would have been a lot more, a lot more difficult. So find a mentor, um, use, use a, a platform and gear that you know is going to work well, but don't obsess on it. That, that would be my advice because you're going to come away with a different idea about what you want to shoot with. Yeah, that's a really good point, too. Yeah, you, you, uh, you go in there and you may not ever shoot that particular rifle in a match again, it, being your first match. Like, okay, that, that was fun, but I see where I would much rather shoot, uh, say, a bolt gun as mm -hmm. opposed to a semi-automatic. Yeah. Um, or you may just, that, okay, the semi-auto, the really, because there there's definitely stages where that semi-automatic is pretty nice. Um, but as you get along, further along, uh, you, you notice a lot of these guys can work a bolt without the rifle moving at all um, mm -hmm. and, and get rounds on target. So, yeah. but you're right, you know, don't obsess on the gear. The first time you go in there, just hit, but have good quality gear uh, mm -hmm. and know how it functions. Yeah. You know, on your first match, you go in there, go in with an open mind and, uh, and with a good attitude. And typically all the people in your squad, or, uh, like Gavin experienced, are there to help you. They understand that you're a novice. And uh, they know that that's where uh, the sport grows, so they're more than more than happy to help you. Yep. So again, if you're at all interested in in PRS, I would say find a group of guys or a, a particular mentor, get connected with them, have them help you out, sign up for the match, and do it. You know, it might not be convenient, make it a priority, and do it. Just do it because you're going to have a lot of fun. You're going to learn a lot of valuable lessons, and if it's just not your thing, that's fine. But you've still walked away with a whole lot of great skills and and great friends for sure. sure. Absolutely. Yeah. So we're going to follow this up with another video where we talk about the gear that we used in in this particular PRS match, the gear that we're interested in using in future matches, and so make sure that you're subscribed to my channel. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Until next time, happy shooting and happy reloading.